Hey guys, I'm going to be sharing with you my To Be Read pile for April and May. So before I head into my TBR plans for April and May, let's talk about my February-March TBR. That all went very well, and I even got done uh, about maybe two weeks or so, a week and a half, something like that, uh, early, which was nice. I always like when I get done with a TBR early, because then I can always start like my next TBR a little bit earlier. <laughs> that way I can kind of squeeze in more books and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, February-March went very well got everything done. For the most part, I think I enjoyed everything. Um, the big thing that I accomplished in that TBR was getting through the All Souls trilogy by Deborah Harkness, um, which is what the Discovery of Witches TV series is based off of. Um, really loved that series. Uh, I will get a, a review of that. A review will come at some point in the far future, you guys, but I do have reviews up on Goodreads for it, if you will. Um, um, so, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into, uh, April, May. Lots of, lots of goodies here as well. So, my big goal for the entirety of this year, I've been trying to work my way through a bunch of, uh, book series that I'm just very far behind on that, and they're all just building up. I'll look through my, my Goodreads list and because all of my books on Goodreads, however I purchased them, they're all in order from what's the oldest at the top to the newest at the very bottom. So yeah, everything at the top of my Goodreads list, it's all very, very old books and a lot of it is mostly series that have kind of built up over the years. So yeah, I've been really trying to get through a bunch of series this year, series that have just been lingering on my shelves and whatnot. Um, so yeah, one of, uh, so yeah, the, the first thing here, uh, that I'm going to be talking about is a book series, and this is the the Iron Fay. I believe it's called the Iron Fay. This is the I the Iron Fay series by Julie Kagawa, and this is a young adult series. Um, so yeah, there's this first book here called The Iron King, and uh, this is a book series that I that I kind of really primarily got. Because when I first was on BookTube way back in the day, when I first got started, a lot of the main channels that I was subscribed to and watching, I was subscribed to primarily a bunch of people who reviewed and talked about a young adult. And that was kind of all the recommendations I was getting. So a lot of my very, very early books that I first started getting on BookTube were a bunch of young adult books. So yeah, this is one of those. This series is one of those that I had been hearing about and I just kind of got and I, I, they've just been on my shelves for a very very long time and it's like you know what I bought them I'm gonna go ahead and get to them read them I'll probably like them okay <laughs> I'll probably like them okay if I don't that's fine um but yeah I don't even remember what the series is about about why I even was really interested to get it to be quite honest uh, I know it had something to do with like fairies and I do love I do love books that deal with fairies <laughs> um but yeah I'll, I'll read you the synopsis of what this first book is about uh, Megan Chase has a secret destiny, one she could never have imagined. Something has always felt slightly off in Megan's life, ever since her father disappeared before her eyes when she was six. She was never quite fit, she never quite fit in at school or at home. When a dark stranger begins watching her from afar and her prankster best friend becomes strangely protective, protective of her, Megan senses that everything she's known is about to change. But she could never have guessed the truth, that she is the daughter of a mythical fairy king and is a pawn in a deadly war. Now Megan will learn just how far she'll go to save someone who cares about, uh, she cares about to stop a mysterious evil no fairy creature dare face and to find love with a young prince who might rather see her dead than let her touch his icy heart. <laughs> this, this definitely sounds so young adult cliche. <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I, I got this way back in the day. I, I, I almost really don't have an interest in reading it, but I mean, I, I purchased these. I'm going to read them. I'm the type of person that when I buy a book, I'm going to read it either way, even if I kind of lose interest in it. I'm not sitting there wasting my money. <laughs> I am not wasting my money. But on the plus side, this series, um, I did purchase all these at like a used bookstore, used, used bookstore, so I didn't waste a lot of money if that's the case. But still, I might pleasantly like these. I do want to give them a chance. I, I do, like I said, I do like books that deal with fairies and whatnot. But this may end up be pleasantly surprising for me. Who knows? So yeah, there's that first book, and then the second book is called Iron Daughter. Book three is Iron 
Queen. And then the last book is uh, Iron Knights. And then I do know there's definitely like a spinoff series after this. I definitely have no intention of, of going into the spinoff series. Even if some happens I do really enjoy these, I still have no intention of going into the spinoff books. Um, and yeah, oh god, these covers. This is definitely really classic cliche young adult covers, isn't it? Oh lord. Okay, moving on from that, something else that I've been trying to accomplish throughout this year. I've been trying to catch up on a bunch of Disney, <laughs> Disney themed books that I have lying around in my room. Oh lord, this is sticking. What's sticking? There's something. Oh, I remember now. There was something sticking on this other book down here that I had peeled off. Like, you know, when Barnes & Noble sits and puts little price tags and stuff on their books or whatever book club stuff. Yeah, that's what I peeled off. That's why it's sticky. Okay, I, I got distracted. The stickiness on this book distracted me. Um, so yeah, I've been trying to get through the um, uh, Twisted Tales book series. So yeah, this is up next in Twisted Tales, and this is Unbirthday by Liz Braswell. And what all of these Twisted Tales books do, they take what you're already familiar with, with your, fa with, with your favorite classic Disney movies, and they twist something about the narrative that's going to affect the entire story. So yeah, this one is asking, what if Wonderland was in peril and Alice was very, very late? <laughs> and yeah, we have the, the Queen of Hearts here on the cover. And yeah, I, I'm very curious what, what, what the what if situation is going to be. Uh, what does that mean? What if Alice was very, very late? Like she doesn't come to Wonderland at all? <laughs> What does it mean? <laughs> okay, and then I have The Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont, and this is the book that I was talking about had some sticky, like a sticky tag on it that I had to peel off. You know, how do you get, let me ask y'all, how do you all get, like, the sticky price tag thingies? Can you hear that? Can you hear it? <laughs> how do you all get that off your books? Because I'm afraid to damage and destroy my books by trying to rub something off. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to get rid of that. It's, it's driving me nuts. It's, the sound. The sound is driving me nuts. I'm sure it's driving y'all nuts because I keep doing it. I'll stop. Uh, but yeah, The Christie Affair. Um, this is, uh, let me see. Let, I don't want to go get too ahead of myself and tell you what the wrong thing about what this book is about. Okay, so in 1925, Miss Nan O'D infiltrated the wealthy, rarefied world of, of author Agatha Christie and her husband, Archie. In every way, she became a part of their life. First, both Christie's then just Archie. Soon, Nan became Archie's mistress, luring him away from his devoted wife, desperate to marry him. Nan's plot didn't begin the day she met Archie and Agatha. It began decades before, in Ireland, when Nan was a young girl. She and the man she loved were a star-crossed couple who were destined to be together until the Great War, a pandemic, and shameful secrets tore them apart. Then acts of unspeakable cruelty kept them separated. What drives someone to murder? What will someone do in the name of love? What kind of crime can someone never forgive? Um, so yeah, this does have something to do with Agatha Christie probably dealing with, uh, was it her seven day disappearance? No, or 11. No, it was 11 days, wasn't it? Um, Agatha Christie, author of, you know, popular mystery thriller crime novels and whatnot, um, she really disappeared, I think, for like 11 days, and it's always been this unsolved thing. She came back, never spoke of it, even until her dying days, she never spoke about it. So I'm assuming this book is going to kind of probably lead up to that point. Um, I, I did read um, another book a few years ago by Marie Benedict called uh, The Mystery of Mrs. Christie, and that had a lot to do with Agatha Christie's uh, mysterious disappearance as well. Um, so this book, I hope it's not too terribly similar. It sounds like it is a little bit different. And it has its own little spin. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely excited to get to this. And next up, this is a book that I believe when I did my top five most anticipated books back in January, uh, this is a book that was uh, at the very top of my list. I can't remember if it was number one on my list or just somewhere in there. But yeah, this is The Last Grand Duchess by Bryn Turnbull. And the little subtitle down here, A Novel of All Olga Romanoff, Imperial Russia, and Revolution. And you guys, y'all know I am a sucker for the dying days of Imperial Russia and whatnot. Um, and yeah, this is about uh, Olga Romanoff, who was the eldest daughter of Tsar Nicholas II and whatnot. If y'all know your history, you know the Romanoffs were uh, brutally executed back in 1918. Um, so yeah, I, I'm pretty excited to get to this book. Um, yeah, what is this book about? Let me tell y'all. 
uh, Grand Duchess Olga, Romanov comes of age amid a shifting tide for the great dynasties of Europe, but even as unrest simmers in the capital, Olga is content to live the sheltered life her parents have built for her and her sisters, hiding from the world on account of their mother's ill health, their brother Alexei's secret affliction, and rising controversy of her father Grigory Rasputin, the priest on whom the Tsarina relies. Olga's only escape comes from the grand tea parties her aunt hosts amid the shadow court of St. Petersburg, a world of opulent ballrooms, scandalous flirtation, and whispered conversation. Yes, can't wait for this, you guys. Next up, something else I've been trying to accomplish throughout this year. I have this big gigantic bind up of uh, one, two, three, four, yes, four. I had to count how many novels were in there. Uh, four of uh, Mark Twain's novels. Uh, back in January, I read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and then for my um, February March TBR, I read The Prince and the Pauper. So, yeah, here for April, May, um, I'm going to be doing The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. And I feel like with all of Mark Twain's novels, it's like I know a lot about them, kind of just their pop culture, if you will, but I really don't have any idea what they're really all about. So yeah, I definitely can't wait to get to Huckleberry Finn. It's it's definitely considered like an American classic and whatnot. So yeah, I've really been enjoying uh, my, my experiences with Mark Twain so far. I've been having a really good time. They're very, very easy classic literature to read. Um, they're not like overly flourishy or flowery or overly metaphorical or anything like, like um, um, classics tend to be. They're very, very easy to get through, I think. So yeah, uh, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is my next experience with Mark Twain coming up. So, after all that, I do have time to squeeze out one more book, you guys. So yeah, I'm going to be going through my TBR jar here. I feel like I have not gone through my TBR jar in a long time. I just have a ton of books built up in here, as you can see. So yeah, I'm going to dig in here, find a book, and hopefully it's a good one. It should be. Okay, let's see. I'm going to try to dig somewhere near the bottom here. Let's see. Let's dig somewhere near the bottom. <laughs> okay. Ow. Ow. I think my hand is stuck. <laughs> Okay, do I have something? I, I do. I'm terrified. I'm going to drop this. They're all going to come flying out. Let's see. What did I pick here, you guys? Which book is this? Okay, I have picked out a book here, you guys. Now it's just a matter if I can find this book. Give me just a hot minute. <laughs> Okay, you guys, I found the book. I think that took me a couple minutes to dig in my closet and find it. Seriously, uh, I'm very tempted to do a video showing you guys my closet back here because I have run out of bookshelf space in my room and my closet is absolutely full of books. And yeah, that's what I was back there trying to, oh Lord, hunt down. I'm a little exhausted now. <laughs> I have so many books back there, it's not even funny. But yeah, what I picked out from my jar here, after about two or three minutes of searching, uh, was The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. And yeah, this is a nice choice, um, because it is, it's a book, it, it's under 300 pages. So yeah, that'd, be, that'd fit nicely into the time I have left, left for, uh, for, uh, the April, May TBR and whatnot. So yeah, this book... Uh, just after the Second World War in the small English village of Chalton, an unusual but like-minded group of people band together to attempt something remarkable. In the early 1800s, Chalton was the final home of Jane Austen, one of England's finest novelists. By the 1940s, little remains of her legacy but a few distant relatives and their diminishing estate, including the cottage where Austen wrote or, or revised her books. With the winds of change blowing through the country, in the post-war days and the cottage's future now in the hands of fate, a group of disparate individuals fight to preserve both Austin's home and her legacy for the world. These people, a farmer, a young war widow, the village doctor, an employee of Southby's, a Hollywood star, a local solicitor, the anticipated heiress to the estate, and a precocious house girl, could not be more different. And yet they are united in their love for the works and words of Austin. As each of them endures their own quiet struggle with the loss and trauma of war and other tragedies, they find solace, connection, and hope in rallying together to create the Jane Austen Society. Oh, this sounds so cute and charming, you guys. Um, yeah, I, get, I definitely can't wait to get to this. this. This definitely just sounds right up my alley. This is like a book for people who love books, it sounds like. <laughs> so, you guys, that is it for my April, May TBR. Uh, in the comments below, have you guys read any of these books? Do you have any interest in them? Just let me know your thoughts. And yeah, does anybody else have a book 
storage issue like I do. Oh my god, it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's it for this video. You guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.